Hi everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and I am super excited to do a changelog episode today, a longer one probably, about ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow is the app that I use to record my Mac's screen. I use it every single day, and I absolutely love it. Um, it is the most essential app maybe in my workflow across my day job, across this YouTube channel, and across freelance work I do where I make videos kind of like this YouTube channel uh, for other companies. So. I was super happy to see an update for it. I was excited to see what was in it. Uh, just for some clarity on sponsorship and pricing, uh, this is not a sponsored video. Telestream has no idea who I am, <laughs> um, although I do very much like their software. Uh, I purchased the app myself, so I am a previous owner, so I did get upgrade pricing from version 9. I had to pay $49 for this update. If you're buying into ScreenFlow new, uh, it's $149, so definitely not a cheap piece of software, but for the value I get from it, I'm super happy to pay, especially the upgrade great pricing. I would have paid probably 150 if they'd asked for it. Uh, but yeah, super happy with the pricing. Um, but it's definitely not nothing. So I want to make this video to show you kind of what's new in version 10 to see if it's worth it for you. So there are 10, ironically, things I think that are kind of notable about this update. Uh, the first one that they want to let you know about is performance. There's lots of performance improvements in the app. And in my hour or so using it this morning, I would agree. Uh, it definitely feels faster on both my Intel uh, MacBook Pro, my 2015 MacBook Pro, as well as my current YouTube device, uh, a uh, 2020 MacBook Air with an M1 chip. Uh, so it runs great. It runs better on both of those than the previous version of the app. I didn't have problems with those, but Telestream is advertising basically 25 to 50% performance improvements across the board. That's editing your timeline, uh, less CPU usage while you're recording your screen, and uh, render times should be shorter than before. So I'll try to test some of that and put it on screen here if I can uh, with some of the results that I have comparing version 9 to version 10. But yeah, uh, let's jump into the other nine things that I think are notable about this update uh, to give you an idea about what's here. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to pull up ScreenFlow and we're going to ignore this project for a second. I'm going to start a new recording, right? And so this is going to be familiar, but it looks a little different if you've used ScreenFlow before. I'm basically selecting I want to record my screen from my Dell monitor. I'm not recording my FaceTime camera, although I could, and then I can show a live preview of it. Like, yeah, here I am. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to do that. I'm recording into the built-in microphone. That's fine. But then I can also add other things. So these are going to be added as separate tracks now. Uh, so I can also record the built-in display of my Mac. And that's going to be a separate track when I go in to edit once it's all done. Previously, you could uh, record multiple screens, but they'd be one like super wide video track, and that wasn't quite as good. Now there'll be separate tracks. Uh, same with audio. Uh, you can do multiple audio interfaces. You can just record multiple things at the same time, which I think is really convenient. Additionally, you can actually record from a sidecar display. So that's an iPad that's wirelessly connected to your Mac and is acting as a second screen. You can record from that uh, directly into ScreenFlow, which is great. That's a new feature as well. But let's go into a project. So I had this project here. This is a video I made about things uh, that published this week. It's just a normal project, not super complicated. A couple animations here. But yeah, uh, this is the project I was working on. And so I'm going to use this as kind of the base for everything, uh, but the first thing is actually not relevant to this at all. I'm going to go ahead and pull in this video file uh, from a different video I was working on, uh, and we're just going to go zoom in kind of here, and this is a 1080p video in a 4K clip, uh, so let me go ahead and actually just... Uh, there we go. Uh, so uh, this looks a little weird right now, um, and it's going to look weirder. <laughs> um, but you have the ability to uh, remove the background of your videos. And so I actually haven't done this yet. So I can go to video. I'm going to go to filters. Um, and then we have this whole new filters interface uh, where you can kind of see previews of what each one's going to do. A lot of these were already in um, ScreenFlow. You just you know, uh, there was a different interface for it. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to do automatic background removal. And there we go. So it's not perfect. Uh, if I play this back, um, it's actually going to chug a little bit. Uh, you can see it's very similar to what you'd get from something like Zoom, uh, where it's it's definitely not as good as uh, like a portrait mode with a multiple camera setup. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's something. And for some situations, it's going to be useful for you. Um, I actually don't want this at all. Here's another thing you can do. So I'm going to go into this as well. And you see this import button. And so here I can import custom LUTs. 
uh, which is really, really nice. So let me go to my desktop and I'm going to do uh, this one, which is one I use in Final Cut. Now this has already been processed this video, so this might be a little weird, um, but I'm going to add that. And then let's see, where does that show up? Uh, I would expect that to show up somewhere. Um, I don't see it anywhere. Oh, I'm just blind. Okay, sorry. It's right here. <laughs> ABC1. I was expecting it to be in alphabetical order or something, but I guess it's not. Can I drag these around? No. Um, so, okay. So let me add that. And so this is going to be kind of weird. Um, but yeah, that's applying the LUT. Um, again, this video, this file is not exactly right. Uh, so you're not getting the full effect, but you can definitely see kind of like you'd expect from Final Cut or some other editor like that. Uh, you can apply the style and then also um, kind of adjust the intensity. So if you only want a little bit of it, you can do that or you can do the full thing. So again, this isn't a very good video clip for an example, but it's what I had available. So uh, LUTs in, final, or in uh, ScreenFlow, I should say, are a big deal for me because I use them in Final Cut and they're really, really helpful. So hopefully they'll be useful in my ScreenFlow workflow as well. Now let's get rid of that and let's go back to something more normal. So I've got a video clip here and this is going to be talking about, um, let's go to uh, this one. This is all about calendar syncing uh, and maybe I want to do a title, right? And so previously uh, with ScreenFlow, you could go to here and you could add a uh, block text here and you could do that and you could style it and animate it and stuff. And that's, that was nice, but it wasn't really, um, everything you might want. Uh, so now you can actually go and choose a title. And now you have all of these animated titles where we can kind of see previews of them here. They're colored, they're, uh, they have multiple things you can edit. Um, so let's do, let's try this one. So once I see this, I can go ahead and change the uh, fonts of it. I'm gonna change the fonts to what I would actually use. Uh, I know this is actually gonna be on a really light background. So I'm gonna change the text to black. Uh, I'm going to change the background color to something more in line with my brand. There we go. And so I want this to be white text in there. Cool. And then this is going to be, uh, this is, I think, feature four reminders. And then we'll say uh, get tasks into things. Oops. There we go. So add it. There we go, and it's added it way up here. So let me bring it down and zoom in a little bit. And so now if I play it back, you'll see, hey, there's a nice little title there uh, that I didn't have to do anything with. So that's really nice. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, again, you can see kind of up here, there's things you can edit. And of course, because this is just a video track, you can go ahead and add uh, video animations to them. You can do reflections. Um, all of this stuff is possible. I'm not gonna do any of that, but you can like drop a shadow on it. All these things are fully available to you. So uh, this is a really nice thing to use. I'm gonna play around with this and you'll probably see some of them in this very video. Then there are just some smaller things I wanted to hit on real quick. Uh, the UI has been slightly modified. It's very familiar, so it's going to be familiar to people who have used ScreenFlow before, but it has been updated to look more in line with Big Sur's uh, general aesthetic. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, they've also made it so that if we go into the app settings, uh, you can see the interface can be set to the system to match the system, or you can be always dark, always light. Um, that's a pretty basic thing, but it's nice that they've added uh, the ability to have some more flexibility, especially if you want that dark look all the time because you want your editor to be dark even if your system UI is light. Uh, that's definitely a good thing that they've added. They've added this really cool thing with mouse smoothing. So in this clip, uh, you can kind of see me moving my mouse around a bunch. And so if I play it back, you know, it's fine. It's literally one-to-one -one what my mouse was doing, uh, but maybe I want to smooth it out. So let me go back here and I'm going to go into the, uh, let's see, screen recording effects. I'm gonna make sure I select my clip. Uh, and so now I can go ahead and find smoothing. And so I can smooth the mouse movement a little bit. Let me go all the way up so you can see the maximum effect. Uh, but if we play it back now, you'll see it's a little smoother. So it's a little strange because I'm clicking a lot. So I found you only want to do a little of this because it kind of changes where it looks like you're clicking. Uh, and for a screencast, you probably want to be very accurate with that. Uh, but you can kind of see it definitely makes the cursor move a little smoother, which I actually like is a thing that I like because I want those to look very pleasing. Uh, and so what I found is somewhere around like 20, 25% is a pretty nice compromise where you can still definitely see where I'm clicking, uh, but it does smooth the mouse movement a little bit. Uh, so I actually really like this. I think I'm gonna be using this on a lot of videos.
And then the final two things, uh, if I go ahead and pause this, I can go into the app settings and I see there's a whole new canvas section where I can adjust some of the canvas uh, settings that I have in the app. I will note that when I updated from uh, ScreenFlow 9 to 10, I lost a lot of my default app settings, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, so I actually want to have the default background color uh, be this lighter color. I'll get it in exactly a little later uh, but I wanted that and then for timeline I actually have like my video action be two seconds it reduced it to 0 0.5 it changed the action the default action curve to linear instead of ease in and out which I prefer so anyway a very small thing but once you upgrade to 10 from a previous version definitely go into the app settings to make sure it hasn't changed anything for you and then the final thing I wanted to mention today, I don't know if I've done exactly 10, uh, is they have native support for sharing chapters to YouTube. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure how this works, uh, but you can publish to YouTube from the app. And I can select, let's say I wanna do this at 4K, uh, 60 FPS. Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna have to sign in because I actually don't publish, I publish directly into, through the browser. It's not a big deal. Um, but if you have these markers, it looks like in your project. Uh, so I've got calendar there. Um, I can add a new marker here, right? With the tilde key. Uh, this is gonna be uh, reminders or something. Uh, these can get brought into automatic chapter support into YouTube. So that's a nice thing as well if you publish directly from the ScreenFlow app to YouTube. But yeah, that is it for me today. Uh, this was kind of a long video, I think, but hopefully you got some good information about it. Uh, I think this is a, it's a solid update. It's not a game changer, like I said, uh, but some of the things, especially in terms of performance, are a thing that I'm going to appreciate 100% of the time while I'm using the app. I'm super happy that that's there. Um, I'm excited about the titles. I think the titles could be really cool. I really like that they added support for LUTs. So again, I apologize for the video sample I used earlier in the video that didn't look really good, uh, but the ability for me to use my custom LUT in ScreenFlow makes it a more compelling place for me to do more of my editing. Um, if I'm doing like some of it in Final Cut because some of it was on screen and then I do a screen recording, I'm kind of bouncing between Final Cut because I want the color controls that I get there, but I want the screen recording controls I get with ScreenFlow. Now I can do it all in one place and I'm just really excited about that. So um, I'll definitely be playing around with that. Um, if something changes with my opinion on these features, if like something I thought was good turns out not to be, I'll definitely update the description. I'll leave a comment below uh, to make sure you guys see that. But uh, in general, I think this is a strong update for the app, not a game changer like I said, but a decent update. And if you use this professionally, if you use this for your professional work, I think it's probably worth getting because it's going to help you be a little bit more efficient. Uh, it, those performance updates alone, I'm really noticing them. I'm really feeling them. So yeah, those are my thoughts on ScreenFlow 10 in this very extended version of the changelog. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the like button down there. The subscribe button's right there too, if you really liked it. Uh, but yeah, I will see you here next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.